Hello everyone, welcome back. We're gonna be jumping to game two now. It's gonna be on Daybreak, so uh, you know a bit of a you know a better map for actually going into a more of a macro game. And we'll get to see some late game between these players. Should be quite a bit of fun. Let's jump right in and get it started. All right, hello everyone, and welcome back. This is game two in this best of five between Idra in the one o'clock position as our green Zerg against his opponent in the seven o'clock position, Hawk as our red Protoss. Now. Uh, <laughs> It, oh man, Idra is such a troll, but uh, of course Hawk took game one with a uh, nice defense because those early roaches really just came down to his scouting. And uh, let's see what Idra decides to go for in game two. You know, he's a player that uh, sometimes mentality can really affect him. He really does end up uh, sometimes riding on winning the first game in a series. Like, you know, a lot of players will be able to come back and uh, actually some players are even better at, you know, losing the first game and really getting another opponent and uh, just outplaying them, of course, and getting inside their head. Uh, other players really, you know, kind of ride along with uh, with confidence and uh, mind, uh, mindset and mentality, and then Idris really one of those players. So, uh, you know, if he loses the first game in a series, it definitely doesn't bode well overall, at least, at the very least, statistically for him. So, uh, we'll see what he's going to do to get back into the series. Uh, we'll see if he, see, you know, sees some more cheese. We already saw cheese game one. When you're down 0-1, it's not likely... But it is even more likely for Hawk to do that. So Idra going to have to play quite safely here. Hawk, of course, getting in with that pylon scout. So he's going to be able to completely block any possibility of a 15 hash coming out from Idra. Unless, uh, of course, he messed up. Actually, that drone might have even been able to sneak out. But the probe out of position. But he does just go for the pool. Definitely the safe move here. And this is what everyone's doing in the matchup. Got to be safe. Got to get that pool up. Trying to go for the hatchery is a bit of a risk. If they just end up blocking it, and then your pool's even later. Major apparently messaging, uh, <laughs> messing Idra in the uh, in the middle of the match, but it looks like yet again Idra, or excuse me, Hawk uh, enjoying that Nexus wall off. So that's just the stylistic approach that uh, he feels the most safe with, or has the most practice with. And Idra gonna try to get that hatchery, but it is gonna be blocked by Huck, so he's probably gonna have to wait to get out those lings before he can put it down. Maybe he'll try to go for the third instead, but that can be a risky move if you just go straight down to the third uh, and take that base. Uh, then a lot of early Protoss, like two base all-ins, things like seven gate blink, uh, void ray plus one zealot. Oh, look at that! He does get it down. Uh, those types of early all-ins can be a little bit more scary. So it's good that he got the uh, the hatchery up here, as opposed to uh, getting up at the third first, which makes it a little bit harder to defend. <laughs> Idra even poking fun at Hux top three control because uh, you know that's something Hux really known for is his probe micro, and to actually allow Idra to get up the hatchery before the lings are out is unfortunately a little bit of a mistake. So. Uh, you know, nice by Idra actually able to get that up, and that'll just give him a slight little advantage from where he should be at this point in the game. One gas so far, we'll see if he drops down the double gas immediately. Yes, it will be that. Uh, it's pretty much standard here, unless you're going to drop like one gas before your gateway even comes up to get a very fast plus one. So with double gas here, we'll see, you know, is he going to go for uh, an early uh, early plus one timing? Is he going to go for some type of Stargate based opener? Uh, Robo openers are a little bit less common nowadays, but we still do see players try to, you know, just mix in some Warp Prism Harass. Idra just playing uh, pretty safely, holding this Zalonga Tower, not bothering to hold the one outside of uh, Hux base, so you got to be careful about that. In fact, this pro was just skirting around, but it doesn't look like he's going to be doing anything too sneaky. He even has an Overlord at a great position, actually, to watch. This is somewhere, like, forward pilots get put down all the time, even scouting out and just uh, really checking every single little edge of the map with those links. got to be safe. You don't want to die to some silly cheese where it's like, oh, you hit a pylon on the core of the map. Oh, I guess I lose because I didn't scout it early enough. So, it looks like uh, an early Zealot, yet again, from Muck wants to scout out with that. Make sure there aren't any early uh, all-ins coming and maybe even force out a couple extra lings from his opponent as opposed to droning that we see Idra doing. Uh, no additional units on the way just yet. Core is finishing. He doesn't have a third gas, so it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing Stargate play, or at least it's less likely. And we don't see plus one being started. So, perhaps Huck not going to go for any type of timing off two base. Perhaps he's going to try to play the uh, standard macro game, and you know, maybe we'll see some harass from him based on... You know, War Prisms or something, but, you know, try to just go take that third base. It's a great map for it. Daybreak, look at this third. It's like, you got one choke point leading to your third, and of course this one choke point leading to the natural with destructible debris blocking the majority of it. It's so easy to actually just defend uh, extremely effectively, even on three base. So Zealot is going to go over here and scout the third out, so he's going to realize, okay, Idra, you did get that third quite early indeed. And uh, we'll see what he decides to do against that. Plus one has been started now for Hawk, so it is a little bit late compared to most plus one times you'll see, but he's chronoing it to make up for it. So he has that double nexus, he can uh, chrono quite a bit. Looks like a, quite a few links were made here by Idra. Nice position to put that zealot right in, uh, in between the mineral line, just to be as efficient as possible so the links can't get as much surface area on it. And look at that, a stalker has now arrived as well. 
That's uh, just a little bit obnoxious until uh, Link Speed is done, of course. Oh my god, unless it gets surrounded. Idra almost got us around on that Stalker right there. But that's going to force Huck to fall back. Uh, not really easy to kite with just one Stalker against that many Links. You're going to take quite a bit of damage in the process. But it looks like Huck has gone ahead and actually fully walled himself off. And he's actually stuck a probe down in the bottom right. Idra hasn't noticed he's at. There we go. He's pulled back his Links. He's got to take out that probe before it gets pylon set up or take out any pylons that it sets up. Oh, is Huck going to be able to set up a pylon here? His, his plus one is like two-thirds of the way done. His warp gate's finishing. He's got six gateways finishing as well. So he's going to be up to, I believe, seven or eight gates. Here, let me double check that. Yeah, it's going to be up to seven gates with plus one. No twilight, so it's not going to be like a seven gate blink or anything. But you know what? With no forward pylon being able to set up, uh, this is going to be really hard for Huck to pull off. He's probably going to have to basically abandon the attack and, you know, essentially fate the pressure so that uh, Idra plays a little bit less greedy. Uh, and then just go take a third, but that's going to put Huck into a pretty rough position because, uh, you know, when you let a Zerg just get up a three base economy for free like that, you don't put on too much pressure, and then you try to play the macro game, uh, oftentimes Zergs can just mass up a ridiculous amount of roaches and just deny that third over and over. So we'll see if Huck is able to put on the pressure necessary to stop Idris' third here. Zergan Speed has just finished. He has plus one Carapace on the way. It looks like two violence set up here from Huck. Oh, pretty good positioning behind the minerals so they couldn't get picked off, but it wasn't enough. And now that it's been picked off, you can see the stalkers start to move back home. You really can't be aggressive here. Uh, and you know with no sentries in this army either, it's just, there's not much you can do. Now he's going to have to just kill off this pylon, warp in a whole bunch of sentries, and go into the standard game. You can see him finally adding on the two extra gas geysers. Uh, but now to go into the standard game after all of that, and even supply block himself after losing that pylon, so unfortunately not putting them up, those up in time ahead of time. Oh man, with this third up at this point, this is going to be really, really hard for Hawk. He's just coming into the game... Unfortunately, a little bit behind at this stage. Nice force fields, though. Catches all of those lings. Oh, no. A big surround coming in, though. All of these sentries are exposed. But great force fields yet again protecting them. They are taking a bit of damage on the right here. He doesn't have any force fields left. The sentries are starting to die. This is brutal. So, a nice defense. But to be down to three sentries, the problem is, since Huck added on the double gas at his natural really, really late compared to when you normally see it added for an expansion, he really doesn't have the gas to be able to afford to rebuild sentries effectively. So to lose those sentries at that stage of the game, when he was already behind an economy against his opponent, just really, really hurts. Now he is, or was ahead, on Harvesters there. But of course not going to be the case anymore as Idra is feeling safe enough that now he has the confidence to draw up just a little bit, actually uh, using those to make oh, quite a few extractors. So he's finally starting to gas up. He's uh, feeling that that stage of the game where he's just making a ton of links and having the options to make roaches is now over. Excellent forces yet again. Uh, this control from Huck is being is really great, but look at that. Idra is so smart, just sending a couple links into the natural to pull the army out of position to force field. Well, it sends the rest of them to go take out that nexus. And unfortunately, Huck, you know, with his small army, just wasn't able to split up effectively and therefore lost that nexus. He did cancel it, but, you know, having that nexus delayed when your opponent is already that far ahead economically, I mean, things are just starting to look more and more bleak for Huck here. It's going to take a bit of a miracle to get back in this game. And with the Spire on the way, this is a moment I think a lot of Protoss players are going to be you know, pretty familiar with when it's, you know, you're already behind. If you're going up against Muta and you're ahead, it's like no big deal. You just get your Blink Stalkers out, you get your Storm, you put a million cannons at every base. Um, but if you're behind and you're going up against, uh, you're going up against Muta, it can be just brutal. The Muta's just walking your base. It's like, oh, well, I have a bunch of sentries over here and you just walked into my main and I just lose the game. So, uh, this is going to be pretty hard for Hook to hold off. I'm actually surprised he hasn't done anything sneaky, like th try to throw down like a Dark Shrine or something. Because just trying to go into this game with a standard macro play is going to be pretty impossible. I mean, especially we see him morphing in tons and tons of Zealots because he had to spend so much gas on all these sentries. Look at that, 12 sentries. Does he have to hallucinate? Oh, no, he does not. Um, so he basically has no anti-air. When that Spire finishes and Muta's come out, oh, this is going to get pretty brutal, of course. Uh, Idra didn't save up a ridiculous amount of gas, just has like 400, 500 make a couple mutas, because uh, instead he morphed in quite a lot of Banelings here, so you know what? Banelings, I mean, they're good against Zealous and Sentries, but if Force Wheels get put down, they're going to be pretty useless. So, Baneling Speed is about to complete. We'll see if uh, Huck has the micro he needs. He needs the Force Wheels. Oh my god! Oh, last second. Force Field. Excellently placed there. Saving all of those Sentries. A perfect extra Force Field being added on as well. And you know what? These plus one zealots are being extremely effective. Of course, Carapace is up now for Idra, so at least it's not plus one against zero zero. But Idra is definitely having some trouble dealing with this force. Let's go down! Oh no! Huck barely misses that force field, and some Banelings get in, hit the sentries, and that's all it takes. All the sentries go down, and now Huck, with basically no army, he just threw away quite a bit of gas. Excuse me, into that uh, into that attack. And Idra, meanwhile, got a fourth up. So when you look at Hux, it's like, alright, you, you got your third up. That's great that you put on that aggression, which basically kept the Zerg at bay defending instead of making mutas, which allowed you to get up your third and secure it. 
and look at that. He's even setting up cannons because he, uh, I guess he doesn't, he hasn't seen the spire, but he pretty much knows meters are on the way. He's seen all those lings and all those, uh, just a couple banelings as well, without any drop tech, without any roaches or hydras, uh, no infestors as well. So he's expecting me to play, just setting up cannons everywhere. You know what? This is a type of style where on this map, sometimes Protoss players can just turtle extremely effectively uh, with a lot of cannons. Oh, nice catch on that sentry by Edra. But if you turtle effectively enough with a lot of cannons and you get up your storm, you get up blink, sometimes you can get back into a game that even when you're this far behind. So uh, we'll, we'll have to see how effective the meter harass is from Idra. It's one of the things he's known best for. Um, just one of those styles that really requires a ton of APM to actually be effective. You need a lot of multitasking, because if you ever stop paying attention to your mutas, especially like a T uh, ZBT, uh, you can be screwed, but look at that! The cannons forcing him back, since he spent so much gas on those banelings, he really doesn't have that many mutas. Uh, of course, if he could spend all of his gas on mutas, you know, yeah, then he'd have more to be able to kill off the cannons, but then he wouldn't be able to defend against the early Zealot sentry attack. So, uh, overall, even though Idris isn't really able to do that much damage with Harass right now, uh, he's he's still playing quite intelligently in terms of just you know not not accidentally like going in suicide all those mutas not like just waiting for the mutas and not getting banelings and just dying to the early all in the early attack. I'll try to take this fourth out in the front, but this is a pretty exposed location. You can see Idra just swarming in with tons of zerglings, a lot of banelings as well. Uh, and of course, he does have one one now off for for his ground units, whereas Huck two O is not quite done yet. He does have, does have storm splitting as well. Uh, but it was really just delaying him from taking additional bases. That's exactly what you need to do. At this stage of the game, Protoss is always extremely limited by gas. Uh, you need to be making Templar, Sentries, Stalkers, every bit of anti-air cost gas. Um, you don't just need anti-air, you also need a lot to be able to deal with uh, Lings as well. And you can't just make a lot of Zealots if you're up against Speed Banes as well, so uh, it's a bit of a tough spot. When you get your fourth tonight, it's like, what does Huck do to get that gas back? He's got to somehow limit the economy of Idra, but so far we haven't really seen him able to do any harass yet. It was really just that early attack with Zealots and, uh, Zealots and Sentries, so... We'll see if he's able to defend this attack. A couple extra cannons being put up. Blink Stalkers blink forward, but it's so many Speedlings streaming in! The Stalkers do not have much of an escape! The surrounding everything- Oh, excellent! Storm taking out so many of the Lings right there. Oh, uh, but the Templar out of energy. They might want to morph into Archons right now. He still has a lot of Zealots. Those storms unfortunately missed the mutas. Great dodges there by Idra, and you know what? He, all of his links are dead, but there's not much anti-air left to deal with these mutas. Two Archons will complete, as well as a couple Stalkers, but he's lost a lot of his probes here, uh, and just a lot of mining time as well. You can see we're at 87 drones to 69 probes at the moment. Uh, and Idra's just essentially getting further and further ahead this game. You can see him starting to spread his creep all over the map in all three directions. Oh, we'll probably see him go ahead and take that fifth base pretty soon here, as he is getting close to remaxing. Uh oh, gotta be careful though, those mutas walking over the stalkers. Nice job avoiding the Archons though, that's really we want to, you know, avoid that splash damage. Especially Archons with plus two attacks can get pretty scary. Nice job, just picking off probes wherever he can. One of those things, you know, you'll see a lesser player just kind of walk, uh, you know, on move command away with their mutas and they'll walk over units. Supposed to paying attention and attacking any units that they walk under. Interesting that Idrid decided to take the 6 o'clock as his 5th as opposed to this base. Now of course it does have double geysers as opposed to this base which only has one rich Vespine geyser uh, and those 6 mineral patches. But it is a bit of a more uh, exposed position to be harder to defend. Looks like he might want to try to attack again. He is maxed out. He's got 2-2 two -two on the way. 2-1 is now completing there for Hawk though. And uh, he's done an excellent job of staying in this game. He's been behind economically all game long and he's still been able to stay in. Uh, stay alive here. Can he get the storms he needs, though? These mutas coming in. Banelings! Unfortunately, losing a lot of the Banelings to that Archon. Uh, but the Stalker count is dwindling. Zerglings and Banelings streaming in. Mutas just picking out absolutely everything. Nice job. Picks off that uh, Archon. There is still one left here from Huck. Uh, and it looks like he might just barely have enough to defend here. Gonna have to wait for another Remax from Idra. 30 Lings, 8 Mutas, and finally, actually, some Infestors as well on the way. Uh, you know, I'm interested to see, is he going to actually mix in Neural Parasite later on and try to use that against Archons, or is he just going to be using Fungal against the Zealots uh, and Blink Stalkers? Uh, fifth is now up, he's going to start setting up some Spines there, and of course Double Gas, that's the number one thing you want. Uh, you know, I said Protoss is limited by gas, obviously Zerg is extremely limited by gas as well. Trying to make Infestors, trying to make Mutas, trying to make Banelings. Trying to switch into late game tech and get Broodlords. There it is, actually Greater Spire is on the way. So we'll be switching over into Infestor Broodlord. Looks like maybe he's going to try to go for some more aggression into the main. He hasn't been there since that first attack. So uh, actually, Huck has kept it relatively undefended. Didn't leave a Templar here like many Protosses do in this situation. And with only three cannons that aren't uh, aren't actually near each other, he's going to be able to pick off almost everything. Looks like Huck can go for a counter with some of his army while he sends just the Templar back home to defend. 
Counterattack will be able to be defended though. This is why all of a sudden it makes so much sense that Israel took this base. He can harass the main and get right back over here to defend immediately if Huck ever goes for counterattack. Tons of spines being set up as well as is very characteristic of a mass meter player uh, when you deal with you know, counterattacks and base trades. Wondering, you know, essentially when is Huck going to take this fifth base? That's, that's going to be uh, the you know the point, uh, the point of change here in this game in terms of you know when uh, where Idris is going to be putting on his aggression. But unfortunately, he's being a little bit inactive with these meters right now. Um, and Huck's able to just kind of sit back. I mean, we really think about it. With just one Templar in those cannons, he could be aggressive. Try to, you know, pick off some of the cannons, avoid storms. He's probably worried about uh, this aggression from Huck coming forwards, though. But usually, what we see players with meters do is they try to preempt the attack. They don't let the Protoss move out by just harassing so consistently that the Protoss always has to move back and defend and face a base trade if they ever do move out. Um, but since Idri isn't keeping up the pressure right now, he's playing a little more defensively. Uh, that just means he's going to wait and just try to win an actual engagement with those Broodlords, with those Spines, with those Infestors. We do have uh, five Infestors here with quite a bit of energy. Uh, just one Fungal from each, but soon to have two Fungals on each of those uh, Infestors. And oh, look at that! Hawk taking this Frontal Base. A bit of a risky move. This will be great, though, if he can get all those Cannons set up. Uh, and then he can just go take this base for free. We just coming into the main. Oh, nice! Picking off a pile on there. Dodging a Storm as well, so these three Gateways are Unpowered, and look at that, Huck is sending his entire army back to, uh, to defense. This is exactly what Idra needs. Um, and he actually, he should see this base with his creep spread, so what I would love to see him do is, while the army's out of position defending here, send a whole bunch of links over to that 12 o'clock and just pick that off. Because uh, you know all the Stalkers and Archons and Templar are out of position, but uh, it doesn't look like he did that. Actually, a couple Templars were left anyway, so uh, Huck quite well defended here. Only one pylon, though. Quite Nartosis pylon with those six cannons. Gotta be careful about that. Idra has plus two air weapons on the way. Uh, and Huck right now is grand. He's still at 2 1, so his 2 2 is just a little bit late there. I'm also very shocked that he's continuing on armor upgrades as opposed to shield upgrades. And he has so many Archons and Stalkers, which don't really de uh, generally benefit that much from, uh, from armor upgrades. Storm going down on the Broodlords, but Broodlings are starting to destroy everything. This is a dangerous position for a Protoss player. You don't have Void Rays out, uh, and you're really just relying on Stalkers and, uh, and uh, Storm, of course, to deal with Broodlords. Got to be really careful about those broodlings if they start to really amass. Looks like he might be waiting for that plus two armor to engage here. Just another couple of seconds. Storm's going down. Oh, massive storms. But the, oh my god, the transfusers. There are so many queens. Feedback's going off those well. Storm going off. Mute is coming right in. All the Zerglings streaming in. Infested Terran's getting put down. Broodlord's doing so much damage and being transfused absolutely continuously. Huck's entire army is starting to melt here, but Idril's losing a lot as well. And once you lose those buffer units of the Zerglings, then all of a sudden the Sockers are able to blink forward and pick off the Broodlord's. It doesn't look like he has the transfusers he needs. Idril's starting to lose his entire army right now. All of these, all of these Broodlord's, these Infestors, these queens, all these units that he has spent so much time building up, and now he's frantically trying to rebuild, but with nine Corruptors on the way? Oh man, I mean, Huck doesn't have any Colossi, so to make those to try to later make Broodlords essentially means he's not going to have any units to defend this incoming counterattack. So these 13 Corruptors, I don't know, maybe he'll be able to morph them in at the last second here, but Mass Link streaming in against four Archons. Oh no, four Archons with 2-2 two, two, going to be pretty hard for Mass Link to deal with. Uh, you should be ashamed of yourself getting called out. By Idra, I wonder if he's going to ask him to apologize for playing that race again. I don't know, we'll see. But more Broodlords are being morphed in. He's certainly not out of this game yet. Huck, uh, you know, you really can't afford to just keep uh, being aggressive like that. When there's Spines, Lings, Broodlords being morphed in, it's like you're on creep. You're eventually going to lose those Stalkers, and then things are going to top a lot of control when you have no anti-air. So Idra is holding it on in this game, but it's, it's looking tough for him. He's back on even bases. And we really think about how this game has evolved. It's really phenomenal because Huck was just so far behind early on. That third was delayed so long. His sentries were killed off early on, and he's still in this game at the 26 minute mark. So resilient. Now he's coming in for some more aggression, but he doesn't have any storms this time. Gotta be careful. Taking some fungal. Oh no, Idra unfortunately misses the refungal or doesn't have the energy. Oh, he did have the energy. Misses the refungal, unfortunately, allows the stalkers to escape. That's always a really unfortunate move because. Uh, you know, when you waste that energy, it's like the Stalkers just end up regening their shields. Obviously, you regen energy as well, but shields regen quite a bit faster than Infestor energy does. So, gotta be careful with that. I love this Broodlord positioning, though, by Idra. Just really abusing the map in terms of the terrain to his advantage. Excellent choice. Uh, just go over this unpassable terrain. This is why, essentially, this is why you see so many Protoss players opt to go for Void Rays when they're up against Broodlords. Even if their opponent has lots of Corruptors, has Infestors and such. Uh, has plenty of anti-air. If you have those void it just gives you a little bit more utility against this type of a situation. 
uh, where none of your ground units can really uh, range those. He's gonna blink forward, but nice reaction times. Idra does fall back in time, doesn't take too much damage on those brood lords. An excellent sieging of this base, and uh, you know, Huck's gonna start losing probes here, he's gonna start losing economy, he's not gonna be able to keep mining gas. So we have some zealots going for a counterattack down at the 6 o'clock, but there are <laughs> quite a lot of spines here. 10 spines sent from Idra, he has taken the bottom right as well, so he's got every base on his side of the map. We're into a split map scenario here. Hick, uh, Huck finally taking the top left base. And plus three air attacks, about a third of the way down here for Idra. Unfortunately, uh, was a little bit delayed. What are his ground upgrades at? He's at 3-3, so that's excellent. Whereas Huck, unfortunately, has not been continuing his upgrades. Only at 2-2. Two -two. That actually really hurts. When you're playing against a Zerg who's got 3-3, three -three, granted, Lings are not going to be great against Zealots and Archons, but that plus three attack made such a huge difference on those Archons. So, uh, that is going to hurt him. Hopefully we'll see him add on those upgrades a little bit later on. He has plenty of money for it, certainly. Uh, but these Brulos are completely denying mining here from Huck, so this is a... Uh, just such an off position for him. He's going to lose this Nexus. Excellent, excellent work here by Idra. Finally starting to take back a base advantage here. Pull himself back into this game. Maybe we'll start to see him uh, spread that creep back out onto uh, Huck's side of the map. Uh, I'm actually shocked that Huck still doesn't have a Stargate. Not just for the Void Race, which I keep, you know, I keep saying, but really for the Mothership. I mean, that's really the number one way we see players effectively deal with this type of a unit composition of Broodlord, Corruptor, and Fester. A couple links just going for a counterattack. Maybe just suiciding to open up some food. For Edra there. Uh, double Forge is being put down from Huck though, so he will finally be able to get those upgrades. Wow, getting plus three armor before plus three attack. That is uh, so bizarre. I'm gonna have to ask him about that later on, ask him uh, why that's good. Because uh, generally, generally when you're not dealing with like zealots against marines, I mean, stalkers, you don't want to be taking armor damage anyways. You want them to take shields and then you blink them back. So Archons basically have no HP, so the armor is not gonna help you at all there. Uh, zealots is good, but uh, you're not really dealing with that many zealots, and they're just there to kind of soak up damage, so I'm really shocked he's not getting that plus three attack instead. In fact, uh, maybe he already, maybe he thinks he already has it. Maybe he forgot, I'm not sure, because now he's even getting shields level one before plus three attack. Oh, that is going to hurt if that is a mistake, because plus three attack is just such a big deal. But here comes Huck for an attack. Oh, nice blink! The Brulo is just a little bit out of position. The Infestor's not there for the Fungals. There's the Fungal Growth going down, though. And now all these Stalkers are in so much trouble. Feedback's getting put down Storms as well, but Huck is starting to lose a lot of his anti-air right now, and you can't afford to lose that utility in your army lose too much anti-air, then the Broodlords all of a sudden just become unstoppable, and still with no, you know, no mothership uh, anywhere near completion in terms of, like, not even a Stargate started. This is actually starting to look, I, I just, oh, I don't know, I don't know what can do. Oh my god, and a bad rally as well. There we go, does blink those Stalkers back with just Stalkers and Archons. It's just not the unit composition you need to deal with this, unfortunately. Uh, it can work, but as long as the Zerg controls well, it's gonna be hard. Oh, and then Fungals, where are we missing the Fungals? Nice Fungals going off on those armies, but unfortunately the Brood Lord's not being pulled back. Looks like it doesn't matter actually the amount of Broodlings that have massed up. This is why you can't unfortunately let a Zerg get set up. It's kind of like letting a Terran get set up with their siege tanks on you. And there's the GD getting called out. Idra has even it back up to 1-1. Excellently done. Uh, what I was trying to say there was that... Uh, just like when you know when you get a tank set up as a Terran, you know it's like kind of like think about it in like PVT against one on one. You don't want to let the tanks get siege up your natural. Then it's really hard to break. Same kind of thing with Zerg with Broodlords. Once they get set up and they're sieging your expansion like that, the Broodlings are going to mass up to such a great extent that then if you try to actually uh, go engage into that army, there's just going to be so many Broodlings. You're going to take so much damage. Those